good morning guys and welcome back to the channel so as you can tell i am in the middle of the woods which can mean only one thing and that is that i'm fishing the stream in the middle of the woods so what we're after today is we're doing a bit of a slam i'm going to try and catch every predatory species that's in here now the stream is very small i can jump across it in some places but i know of the predator species it holds pike chub lots of chub and there's the odd perch but also one fish that is very rare in here but you do get occasionally is brown trout so i'm going to try and catch a pike a perch a chub and a brown trout all in the space of about three hours which is the amount of time i'm fishing for this morning this little stream is only small and there's really only a couple of swims to fish so it's going to be a hard challenge for me to do this morning but we'll give it a good go is really really sketchy down here i'm not wearing very good footwear for this <laughs> lovely area of like collapsed trees and stuff looks perfect for hiding a pike just got a little dex chatterbait on there with a fat tea tailman out been working well for me recently looks absolutely perfect down here though fish we got one we got one Yes, got to keep the drag relatively tight here. <laughs> yes, because at the end of the day, we're fishing a very snaggy area. We don't want these fish to get snagged up. Well, I've kind of messed up here, haven't I? Because I need to go under there. <laughs> All right, keep a tight line. Right, come off. Oh, he's come off. As we say, I need to keep a tight line and let it go snap slack. God damn it. Right, so we've just had the first bit of action of the session. Now, I was supposed to be using a tiny little, uh, sort of like 6.5 centimetre jerk bait, I think it was, um, a DEX bullet jerk. But unfortunately, in the very first swim, I cast it into a tree and snapped it off on the first cast of the session, unfortunately. So with the bit of action I've just had, I was using a small chatterbait, a dex chatterbait. The fingers crossed that's going to do well for me today. And the setup that I'm using is a 5 to 18 gram Savage Gear SG4 light game rod. I've been using it all summer for the chub pike perch um just fantastic all around if when you're chucking light to sort of light medium baits which is what i'm doing today multi-species fishing with the bit of action we've already had so far in the first 10 minutes I've got a feeling this is going to be a good session Oh, there's a pike right there. There's a pike right there. It actually bent the tail up on my bait as I was bringing it through. Right. Got it. We got it. We got it. Yes. <laughs> Lovely little jack pike. <laughs> You'd already attacked it once, I figured he might come back. Over netting it is only a little guy. Oh. Absolutely awesome fish though. Nailed it, right in the scissor look. Absolutely perfect. Look at that, absolutely nailed it. <laughs> well, at least we got the pike ticked off. Just on that little Dex chatterbait. And these are absolutely stunning little pike. You'll find this on most small streams and little rivers that the pike and chub and perch are all pretty much immaculate. Look at that stunning little fish. And on the light setup, they put up a good old scrap as well. Now let's get this one back. One thing that I think is actually quite important when it comes to this style of fishing, fishing in the woods, little streams, close quarter fishing, and that is bringing with you a pair of polarized glasses. Because when you're encroaching on these banks, the fish see you generally before you see them. And if you're not wearing some polarized glasses, they'll spot you before you get to the edge of the bank and they'll spook off. So what you gotta do is creep up, polarized lenses, 
peek through the trees, see what's down there before you make a cast, and that'll catch you more fish. I can't really recommend you any polarized glasses because I've got through about four or five different pairs to a few different brands over the years. But what I can say is amber lenses, you'll always see me using amber lenses. I don't know why I just find I get a much clearer view of what's under the water when I'm fishing amber. Let's get cracked on and catch some more. I love this little area. You never really know what you're gonna find here. So you never really know what you're gonna get in this spot. It's just an absolutely perfect spot on this river to find absolutely anything. I've just got to hit them. Not sure what it was. But I have just got a single hook on this spinner, so hopefully that won't be my downfall. Don't think it was a trout. I think it might have been a chub or a perch. Big fella, whoa my god, what a hit. Oh my god, what a hit. <sighs> Jesus Christ. It's gotta be a chub, hasn't it? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, here it is. Man, what a strike. I'm trying to pull it through. Yes. Oh, there's a pike chased it in. Okay, so we've got a chance at another pike in this swim. This was just on the dropping spinner. Has it spat it? It spat it. Well, the plan is coming together nicely. I caught a little pike to start off the session after losing one. And now we've caught a stunning chub. And he smashed it so hard, I thought we'd caught the wild card this session, which would have been a trout. You don't get many of them in here, but uh, with the way this chub struck it, honestly, I thought I was into one, but never mind. This is absolutely fantastic. Hopefully I might be able to get another chub or two. It's very, very wild and overgrown this river and you never really know where these fish are gonna be. Let's get this one back. Right, because we know there is a little pike in there somewhere, I'm gonna go out there with a chatterbait again. The little decks chatter we'll just see if it makes a difference there's that pike it's not a bad size one either let's get another pike on the cards come on it's looking at it it's looking at it on the bottom get ready get ready it's gonna strike are you ready guys are you ready? Three, two, one. How about we go from five? Five, <laughs> four. Yeah, you're definitely going to have it. I don't know if he'll have it this cast, but I can just tell by the way he's acting. He's got his pectoral fingers stuck out, flopping from side to side. He's got his eyes pointing forward at the bait, locked in. And that's what they do when they're getting ready to strike at the bait. So he's obviously very, very interested. So I wouldn't put it past him to strike soon. Are you ready? There we go, we got him. See, I know me pike. I know me pike. I actually thought there was another one there then. Surely not two pike there. When I look this way, like another one or something else shoot it off downstream. Unless it was a chub, I put back on him, he's come off. Ah, oh, that's a problem with fishing these snaggy streams. Look at all the stuff in here that I've just got caught up on. I bet it's been doubled up over itself. Now, it was hung up in all that crap down there. The reeds, the branches. Look at the way it's twisting my bait up. Oh, it's time to have a little break. The session is actually going really, really well. I've got two of my target species today. I've caught the pike and I've caught the chub. I've had action off a tiny purchase big and I've not seen a trout at all, which is no surprise really. But right now, my legs are absolutely humming from all the nettles that I've had to traipse through in this woodland just to try and find the fish that I've caught so far. So because I'm finding it quite hard to get the perch and the trout, what I'm gonna try and do is maybe just focus on pike, 
which seem to be ravenous at the minute, and the chub. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, along the way, we might get one of the other two. So we're going to be focusing on some open areas now. Let the nettle stings wear off a little bit. Fingers crossed, we might put a couple more fish on the bank before we have to go. So what you'll notice through this video is when I'm fishing the larger bait like this chatter bait, casting into unknown water where I can't see the fish, I'm going to always use a wire trace. That's a 25 pound wire trace. But when it comes to targeting the chub, if I spot any and I'm using the spinner, then I'm changing over to using a fluorocarbon trace, either the Berkeley's Trilene or the Berkeley's Sick Fluorocarbon. I've got the Sick Fluorocarbon in about 13 pound and the Trilene in about six, depending on the fish that I'm casting to. Got it, we got it. My bait was tangled up as well. Oh, my reel, no, no, no. Wants to loosen up the drag a bit ago. Whoa, that's why we like these lovely little stream pike. Because they are so aggressive. That is not a big fish by any means. Look at the way he's scrapping. Literally took it in less than a foot of water down that margin. Probably shouldn't have lifted him like that actually. He's a little bit bigger than I thought he was. Probably about two pound. I thought it was about a pound while I was playing him then. Look at that MVP of this session is this chatterbait. It's getting absolutely demolished by these fish. I almost can't get over how nice these little pike are. Absolutely stunning little fish and they put up a really, really good scrap, especially on light tackle. That one did some acrobatics for us. Absolutely perfect, right down the margin in just about half a foot of water. Awesome stuff. big pike down there. That was like a massive pike, this little stream. There's a massive pike down there for this little river, for this little stream. It looks absolutely huge. up on a tree branch. Bait's gone down to the bottom. The pike went for it. It's going for it. It's going for it. We got it. We got it. That's a massive pike for this little stream. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe it. It would have smashed it up near the surface but I got caught on a tree branch. Fell off the tree branch, dropped down to the bottom. I just gently twitched it, it came round underneath my feet and nailed it. Jesus! This will be the biggest fish I've caught from this little stream if I can land it. That is a stonking fish for this tiny little waterway and actually this is probably the widest, deepest area. Oh, he bounced off the net. This is the widest, deepest area of this. Stream. There's some areas that you can jump across. This is just a deep pool, and that is why there's fishes in here. I think I've just caught the biggest fish in this stream. Genuinely, this is such. I mean, it looks a decent sized body of water here, but just upstream, it's completely overgrown. There's almost no water coming past that bit. Man, what a stonking fish with this little waterway. You put the effort in and you reap the rewards. Look at that. The head on it is actually pretty damn big and it's a decent length for a fish basically caught out a little stream. <laughs> that chatterbait right in the scissor 
That tends to be where they get caught on the chatterbait. Absolutely nailed it. And would you look at that fish <laughs> for something caught out of a tiny little stream. Sunlight peeking up behind me. Absolutely stunning. And this is probably a fish of about 80 centimetre, which in the grand scheme of things isn't huge. But for a tiny little body of water like this, this is probably the biggest fish in here, which is absolutely awesome. And you never know, in a few years time, this could be a double figure pike. <laughs> Especially if it's eating those chub. Right, let's get him back. <laughs> quality. <laughs> Well guys, I've only been fishing for a few hours today, probably about three and a half to be exact, and what an incredible bit of fishing we've had. I did not manage to slam at all. I was supposed to get four different species, low fishing this little tiny stream river. Look at it behind me, it's so small. And unfortunately I only managed two, but the pike action, what's going on? It was absolutely mental. Um, the main bait that was the goat was this chatterbait here, which is a Dex chatterbait with a little Savage Gear Fat T-Tail Minnow on there. It was getting absolutely demolished and including one very, very big pike in comparison to this body of water. And I actually think that's probably one of the biggest fish in here, if not the biggest fish in here, which is absolutely incredible. If you want to check out the stuff that I've used today, my setup, the laws that I've used, I'll link it all down in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've liked it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch you guys later.